And it's time to jump over and talk to our man, Teddy Kegstat. We talk to Teddy, folks, every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. You can read Teddy's outstanding Tiger Forex report every week. He puts out a new issue Monday morning. He puts out updates throughout the week when warranted, folks. Please check it out if you haven't. Like all the newsletters we do, comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so it's basically risk-free. You get it for 29 days. If you don't like it, you can cancel. You get a money-back guarantee. Head on over to the newsletter tab. You click on the Tiger Forex report. You guys and there? coming up. Coming up in a few weeks, we have a webinar, Wednesday, April 19th, with Mr. Teddy Kegstat. We'll talk to him a little bit about this, talking about the second quarter market forecast webinar and talk some markets. Teddy Kegstat, good went, morning. I'm doing all right. How about yourself, Tommy? Doing good. So I was just introducing you, bringing you on, um, talking about the Tiger Forex report, man. As I mentioned, people, please check it out on the front page of TFNN, folks, right under the newsletter tab. And if we could kick things off, Teddy, I know you're going to be putting together a webinar for subscribers mm -hmm. coming up in a few weeks on Wednesday, April 19th. I've got the information up here um, for the viewers. If you could just talk a little bit about what you'll be talking about in that webinar coming up on the 19th of April. All right. Well, it's going to be a forecasting webinar for uh, quarter two. And as we move into the year, I mean, we have a uh, month end and quarter end coming up, uh, obviously, this week. So when we uh, go over to webinar, we're going to talk about the major influences. So we'll be talking about everything from what's going on with the central banks. You know, um, obviously, that's a very hot topic more now than it was just even a couple months ago. So and then also a lot of the other influencing markets that are going to be, you know, dominating the trends for the currencies. We have a lot of you know, geopolitical things that are going to really start to impact the dollar as well as other, uh, you know, commodity markets and things like that, that will have a lot of the currencies in a tizzy. I think that, you know, especially, you know, what we've been talking about the past few months, the divergence in currencies is becoming more evident. And I think that especially as we go into the second quarter, we're going to have some interesting price swings. And that's what the webinar is really going to be focused on is not the micro what's going to happen this week, like what we cover in the Tiger Forex report every Monday, um, but more about what's coming in the weeks in a couple months to come and what what you really need to watch out for because these are going to be the things that are going to really have pivot points for the market i would say most likely i'm excited for it man and as we've seen boy when this market pivots boy some of the moves can just be amazing to put it lightly and for those that aren't familiar teddy could you just talk to the listeners and viewers a little bit just about your history and how you got even into forex versus you know equities whatever it be i know you do candlesticks a lot as mm -hmm. well but um for those that haven't followed i know we've gone this through this before at least once or twice but how did you get into really forex the niche and i know it drives so much of what's going on right now especially but can you give us just a, a quick you know how you got into whether it's markets and then how that brought you to where you are right now with forex trading unlocked and um the forex markets in particular Sure, sure. Well, um, I've been in the market since I was a kid, literally. Uh, so, But when I first started out on the trading floor at the CBOE and then moving to the Merck, I was in the uh, equity pits. I was in the OEX and then I was in the S&P 500 pit. So, you know, I was dealing with the stock market every day, but on, obviously on a derivatives basis. And when you were on the trading floor, you know, you had all these boards around the pits, you know, surrounding the walls of the exchange. I mean, you could see the different quadrants and you're seeing, you know, everything from grains and oil and currencies and every, you name it, every market under the sun is on these big boards and I got to you know learn how there was a relationship between interest rates and the stock market you know because the bond pit and the S&P 500 pit were the two big monsters back then you know so and I would see how they make each other swing and how you watch the cash and stuff like that and then I started to watch the currencies because I knew that you know the bonds influence the S&Ps and vice versa you know but I knew that interest rates were a function of currencies, you know, and we had the currency futures at the Merck also, you know, so at that time, there was no Forex market when I first started on the floor, you, there was the interbank market. So you unless you were a bank player, you, the only game in town was a few futures, you know, like there was the D mark, there was no euro back then, you know, and stuff like that. Wild, but I did right, notice yeah. I did notice the swings um, that currencies had, they actively traded well, um, they were more contained, like the S&Ps is psychotic, you know, um, whether there's news or no news, you know, um, and the bonds, they could flatline, you know, I mean, the bonds, I, I like the bonds because they have the biggest range on a given day. Um, if you trade the euro dollars, you're looking at a three tick market, you know, most days, especially back then, you know. So, I mean, where's there, there was nothing to do there, you know. So the currencies, sure. I could see how they trended. And that was where I'm like, OK, especially because with, with futures, you have overnight risk. There wasn't 24 hour trading back in the early 90s. You know, it was just yeah. beginning, you know. So and that's how I got into currencies was knowing that. You know, I was safer on on a, whether I was long or short the market. If I was right on the trend, I, it was a safer trade. You know, your nice. risk wasn't as high. And that's how I got into currencies. 
I appreciate it. And I ask you to go through it because it's pretty cool how Forex is related to everything, man. And you've been through it in terms of being in the equities, man, looking at bonds, <laughs> looking at markets. And I think it's so cool how, with, you know, the Tiger Forex report, man, um, I don't trade Forex myself, but I love the information you put out, man. And I use that information when I'm looking at the markets, the Forex pairs, the currencies, the bonds, um, crude oil. And you've given us such an education over the years on how all of those combined to drive so many of the markets, especially right now. With that in mind, Teddy, where, where do you want to kick things off on this market, man? Notes and bonds have just been bonkers. Do you want to start kind of to, to some semblance there in mm -hmm. terms of where you see things maybe going? Sure, sure. Um, I mean, obviously, uh, with the dollar, it's very mixed. But with the interest rates, we have a nice little pullback, you know, and I think that, you know, what we saw this lit recent rally was a corrective rally. The overall trend is bearish. I mean, the Fed's not going to stop raising rates, you know, regardless of what goes on in the economy right now, that pressure should remain. OK, so I view this as a currently as a correction. I think it was an exacerbated move because when it first started, that was when SVB first broke. At first, it was one bank. Don't worry about it. There's nothing to see here. Watch the birdie. Now we know it's a systemic banking crisis. There really is a big problem. You know, so it's the buy the rumor, sell the fat kind of thing. So the rumor was we bought the bonds. We had the correction because that's going against the trend. It was exacerbated because of the news. And now I think we're coming into that point where the market's like, OK, yeah, well, we really don't care about the news. We know there's a banking crisis, but the reality is rates are going higher. So and this is just a pause because, you know, the Fed is propping all these banks up. So since sure. they're paying their original prices, they're they're playing with the cash. They've already been having other central banks buy. They're not buying our debt now. They're buying our debt, you know, and then also lending us back debt for cash. So it's the, the whole. It's such a ridiculous loop of what's going on. And when the, it was a cash-driven rally and flight to quality, well, the flight to quality is over because everybody. The news is not new anymore, you know. So now. Yes. It's a matter of how are these central banks going to react. And now their hands are tied more than ever because they want to fight inflation, quote unquote, supposedly, and help prop up their own currencies. But they can't do that if they want to help the banking crisis and the Fed. Wild, right? You know? So, it, I mean, it is, I mean, man. I, yeah. it's, 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 it's so ridiculous, you know. So, I mean, what I, I have to say that we're going to stick to the trend, and that means that yields should go higher. You know, I, with, I think if you're someone who's in the process of, you know, either refinancing or purchasing a property, you're much luckier now than you were a month ago. And I sure. certainly wouldn't wait another month if you're, if you're actually going to pull the trigger because you're probably like going to. You know, and what about crude, Teddy? We got about 30 seconds, a little pop, man. We're up 10 bucks from the lows of 64 bucks. But as our man Kevin Hicks mm -hmm. was saying, we kicked off the month at about 80 bucks. What do you think of crude sure. at 74? I like where it's bounced up to as far as a target price. Now we're coming into where it was support for the market bef before. So the question is, if we sustain a trade where we're at now, we're bullish. If not, we're going to fall back into the range for a little while. Critical area, man. It makes sense. I got yep. that line on my chart. Teddy, I appreciate it, man. We'll talk to you in the next couple weeks. Coming up to that webinar, April 19th. You have a great week. Sounds I'll talk good. to you next Wednesday, man. Thanks, Tommy. Thanks. We'll be right back, folks. Stay tuned.